Hey, New Hope. Hope you're having a great day today. Pastor Zach here, and I just wanted to share something with you that I read that challenged me, and it's found in 2 Kings chapter 13. And we see that there's a story about this king named King Joash, and he's the king of Israel. And he had reigned for 16 years, and it says during that time that he did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and that he followed the sin from his ancestors before him. Now, I wanted to share this with you because I feel like God spoke this to me to share with you. And it's this, just because there's dysfunction before you does not mean that there's dysfunction for you. Just because uh, your parents, your grandparents struggle with addiction to uh, alcohol, to drugs, to pornography, just because there's been divorce before you does not mean that that is for you. You don't have to make the same mistakes that they made. But in 2 Kings chapter 13, we see that there's this king named Joash and we see that there's this man of God named Elisha. And at this time, Elisha, he, he was very sick and he was about to die. And Joash goes to see him because Israel's at war with Aram. He goes to get some advice from him. And as he walks into the presence of Elisha, he begins to weep. There's this man who did evil in the eyes of the Lord for 16 years. And he comes into the presence of a man of God and he begins to weep. If Joash can come into the presence of God and break down and turn from his ways, guess what? So can you. You have not made too many mistakes. You have not done too many things wrong. God has something for you. And I want you to ask God this question. Hey, God, what is it that you want me to do with my life? God, what is it that you want me to give, to sacrifice? God, where do you want me to go? I will follow you. But in 2 Kings uh, chapter 13, starting in verse 15, it says, Elisha said this to him, get a bow and some arrows. And he did so. Verse 16, take the bow in your hands, he said to the king of Israel. When he had taken it, Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. And he said, open the east window, he said, and he opened it. Now, what about this thought? What if... God doesn't want to just open the window for you, but he wants to tell you how to open the window. What if God doesn't want to just do a miracle for you, but he wants to walk you through doing that miracle? What if he's not trying to work us like a puppet, but rather like a coach, and he's telling us, this is how I want you to do it. And he has him open the window that's facing Aram, which were the territories that were oppressing Israel. He had him open the window that was facing his oppression. He says, don't turn your back to your problems. Don't run. Don't pretend like they don't exist, but let's face it. And in verse 16 or 17, he says, shoot, Elisha said, and he shot the Lord's arrow of victory, the arrow of victory over Aram. Hear me, everybody has an Aram and everybody has an arrow. Which one are you watching? Are you watching your arrow, the possibility of victory, or do you have your eyes on your problem? To the point where all you see is your problem. You don't see any way to win. And he says, he, he shot it and he says, this is the arrow of victory over Aram. But guess what? He didn't have victory. How is it possible that God could announce the potential of victory, but the king never experienced it? It's a simple word right here, potential. And I hate to say it, but so many of us are not living up to our full potential, but rather we're living up to our preparations. We're not living up to the potential that God's calling us to do, but we're living up to what we feel like we can do. We're, we're, we're living up to just this idea like, I could be great. Potential, that's not, that's not a compliment. That's like a diss. That's saying you could be great at something, but you aren't. We're, we're not living up to that full potential. And, and continue reading in verse 18, it says, Then he said, Take the arrows. The king took them. Elisha told him, Strike the ground. He struck it three times and stopped. The man of God was angry with him and said, You should have struck the ground five or six times. Then you would have defeated Aram and completely destroyed it. But now you will only defeat it three times. Elisha, he became angry with him. He, he saw that that what could have happened, but he saw that he didn't fully believe. He didn't fully have enough faith that it could happen. He saw that, that uh, Joash, he didn't fully trust God. Many times what stops us from fulfilling our potential is one, not trusting God, and two, just knowing that we have potential. So what do we do? We stop short. We strike the ground only three times rather than five or six. Why? Because we have a fear of falling, shor of falling short. We have fear of failure. Stephen Furtick, one of my favorite speakers, says, the pain of falling short is nothing compared to the shame of stopping short. Man, I would so much rather give everything I have and fall short and, and just have that pain of I didn't make it or it didn't happen rather than the shame of, man, what would have happened if I kept going? Did I stop too soon? So I want to challenge you today. Maybe you've been praying for something for a long time. Maybe you've been, been believing for something. You've been praying for someone. Maybe it's a son or a daughter who's walked away from their faith. Maybe it's someone who's sick who needs a miracle. And hear me, the pain of falling short is nothing compared to the shame of stopping short. Let's not stop short of our prayers. Let's not stop short of believing that God has more for that situation. I'd rather strike the ground with arrows as many times as I could 
rather than just a couple times and see failure. Failure hurts for a minute, but regret, it stays for a while. Let me remind you, that window to the, op to the oppression is still open. You can still pick up the arrows. You can still strike the ground. You can still shoot the arrow of victory over your problem, over your pain. Wherever you need a miracle, God's got something for you. I, I'm praying for you. I believe in you. I know that we're going to see victory happen as we pursue God. Man, we hope to see you this Sunday at church. Remember to sign up online. If you're not coming to church this Sunday, that's okay. You can still watch our online services at our regular times. We love you guys. We hope to see you soon.